I assume that the audience has, has joined us. Uh, thank you all very much for joining. I uh, am happy to have you here today. Uh, the World Trade Center is hosting this event with our partners at the US Commercial Service and, and the Bird Foundation. And uh, the World Trade Center's role is to help Utah companies connect with the world to lower the cost and hurdles to uh, connecting and taking advantage of global trade and global investment. And today's event is a perfect example of that with our partners. Uh, we're here to uh, help you as Utah companies learn about how you can access a wonderful grant program known uh, as the BIRD R&D Grant Program. Uh, it aims to help Utah companies uh, or companies around the world, um, around the US, I should say, uh, uh, raise non-dilutive funds. I'm going to learn more about that shortly. Uh, I'm your host. I'm David Karlbach. I'm responsible for international programs with the World Trade Center. And uh, we're joined this morning uh, by colleagues from the Bird Foundation. Uh, we have uh, Maya Vardy Shoshani. Um, she is with the Bird Foundation. It was established in 1977, so it's been around a while, by the U.S. and Israeli governments. Uh, and it is to fund industrial R&D uh, partnerships between countries, uh, companies from both countries. Uh, it is a non-dilutive grant that can help with up to 50% of the combined R&D costs uh, associated with the project for up to a million dollars a year. So as I said, a, a great grant program. And we're going to learn more about that very shortly here uh, from Maya. Um, she's uh, here today with a Utah company, uh, with Steve, the CTO. Uh, and they're going to share a little bit. He's a uh, CTO for a Utah company, which has benefited from the grant. So you'll hear a little bit more about that as well. And as I said, we're doing this in partnership with uh, the U.S. Commercial Service. And we're going to hear more about their services as well. Uh, they have a full range of expertise in international trade, uh, in uh, taking advantage of uh, 70 international offices associated with U.S. embassies around the world. Uh, and we're going to hear today from Daniel Bruner uh, here in Salt Lake City and his partner in Israel, um, uh, Mike Calvert. Uh, so again, thank you for joining. Uh, I myself uh, want to learn more about this. I hope you'll find it educational. And I think on that, I'm going to turn it over briefly maybe to Mike to say a little bit more. I'm sorry, not to Mike, to Steve to say a little bit more about himself and his company and how they've benefited from the grant and then over to Maya after that. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, David. Yeah, so uh, Steve Lindsay was with LiveView Technologies. Um, we actually got introduced to the to the BIRD project uh, or program back in 2019. Um, it was kind of a, a, a chance email that I happened to get from an, our Israeli partner, uh, Kawamo. Um, and at, at, up to that point, I didn't really know anything about the BIRD project. Um, and so our Israeli partner, um, when they reached out and told us about it, it was it was actually intriguing to learn more about it. Um, just to give you a little bit more information about us, um, LiveView Technologies, we specialize in rapid deployment physical security solutions. Um, so those solutions rely very heavily on um, best in class video analytic te technologies. And so when we got approached by Kawamo, one of the things that was intriguing to us is the fact that uh, Kawamo has a lot of experience with uh, high-end, best-in-class video analytics. Um, and so when they approached us, we, we were very uh, interested in trying to partner with them to see if we could get their solution running on ours. One of the unique challenges with our solution is the fact that it is solar-powered um, and it is cellular-connected. And so there's, uh, there's engineering challenges around how to pull that off especially when you have advanced uh, video analytic technologies. So um, we decided to, to uh, partner together, submit a, um, a, a project to the Bird Foundation, um, and we got approved. And so um, one of the other challenges that we had was by the time we got approved, that's when the pandemic hit. And so um, we actually took a trip out to Israel um, to be able to meet with them, get to know them, and start planning the project right before the pandemic shutdowns occurred. So we, we got lucky from that perspective. Um, but the rest of the project was, uh, you know, remote um, in, in how we worked. Um, one of the great things that we learned through the project was, again, how knowledgeable the Israeli team was. 
Um, and, uh, and that really helped a lot in trying to drive the project forward. Um, so some of the things that you can experience when, when you do um, a project through the Bird Foundation is obviously you're going to be uh, visiting with them. Uh, we had the opportunity, like I said, to go to Tel Aviv and, and the group uh, in Israel actually had a chance to come out here to Utah. So we, we were able to spend some time up at Sundance um, and, and get to know them better. Um, and as we work through the project itself, um, you know, we would come up with various challenges. Um, and uh, the important thing to do when you're when you're working with your Israeli partner on this is to make sure that you have a, a regular cadence meeting with them, that you continue to have clear objectives on what you're trying to accomplish, um, and that uh, you know you're you're as long as you're staying in touch with them, you're able to work through a lot of those issues. Um, one of the things that we were able to get as an outcome of our project was the integration of a of a low powered uh, GPU device that Kawamo was able to get their analytics running on, and we were able to put that inside of our head unit, um, and then be able to get the analytics working. And here's just, here's just an example of, of of that output. Um, on the left up here, this is uh, our software that, that receives the alerts and, and tells us if it's a person detection or, you know, what, what kind of detection it was. And you can see the Calamo output um, that they were able to provide to us. Uh, here's an example of a, of a Lowe's parking lot where it was able to detect a human at night, which is usually a challenge that you have with video analytics, obviously being able to detect uh, vehicles. Um, and also multiple uh, people in there, you could see. But the outcome of this project um, was, again, very fulfilling for both, both sides. Um, one of the things that you need to understand from an Israeli uh, company perspective is they're really looking for an opportunity to be able to launch their solution with a partnering U.S. company um, into the U.S. And so there is a lot of interest um, when the project's done to be able to uh, leverage that partnership on an ongoing basis. So the important thing when you're doing these projects is to make sure you have a great relationship with your Israeli partner. Again, that can be easily done through regular contact and through working through a lot of those challenges that, that you're going to come up with. Um, and then, um, again, just being able to spend time with them, get to know them, understand what they like, they dislike, what their ambitions are. Um, and again, that tight partnership becomes something that's really easy to, to maintain moving forward. Um, but again, from our perspective, it's a great program, especially if you're trying to leverage a lot of the great technologies that come out of Israel. Um, we, we couldn't recommend it more, but that's, uh, that's what I had to talk about today. Great, Steve. Thank you very much. That was a great introduction to the grant, and I, I could really get a feel for how, how beneficial it was for you and for your Israeli partners uh, during the project and, and on a go forward basis. And I should have mentioned to the audience, we're going to have time for Q&A at the end. So um, if you if you have questions, feel free to shoot them in if you're um, on the chat, if you like. Um, and I'll go through those and we'll uh, we'll get to those at the end. Uh, OK, thank you very much. So Maya, over to you, I think, for a, a proper introduction to the an overview of the grant program. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for uh, giving us this opportunity to talk about BIRD today uh, and expose it to more companies in Utah. Uh, as you saw, we have uh, very successful projects uh, project with Steve, with LiveView and Kawamo, and we would love to have more companies applying. Uh, so as you said, and you uh, uh, presented us uh, wonderfully at the beginning, uh, BIRD is an acronym for Binational Industrial R&D. We are a fund that was established back in the 70s by the two governments uh, with the goal of promoting uh, collaboration and innovation between American and Israeli companies. Uh, we are more like a federally funded industrial R&D program and all our funding comes from federal sources. Uh, we use an endowment of $110 million that we received from both governments uh, to give funding, non-dilutive funding for uh, joint R&D projects between American and Israeli companies. Everything we do is for the mutual benefit of both the US and Israel. Uh, so you saw here uh, an example of, of the uh, uh, 
Israeli company that is interested in um, in bringing their technology to the US, but we also see um, see it going the other way around with smaller American companies connecting with larger Israeli partners uh, and uh, getting getting uh, uh, exposure to uh, Europe and Asia um, and new uh, new markets. Uh, a lot of what we do is also, and I'm going to skip this because I don't think that we have time. I'll get back to that if, uh, if we have uh, at the end. Um, a, a big part of our work is to facilitate introductions. So uh, if you don't have uh, already an Israeli partner and you need introductions, we are like matchmakers and we help introduce companies to each other. So we are... Uh, here hoping to talk to uh, Utah-based companies, find out what kind of complementary technologies they're looking uh, 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 in their Israeli partner, and then making introductions. And then if those matches uh, turn into projects, then we, and they apply to us, uh, they submit a proposal, and we can potentially fund up to 50% of their combined R&D budget, uh, budget, up to $1 million, and in some cases, $1.5 million. Uh, for exceptional program uh, proposals or in certain programs that we run. Um, so what do we do? Uh, this is the most important um, uh, slide. We uh, provide non-dilutive funding for US and Israeli partners without taking any IP rights uh, or equity uh, to fund their projects. We don't fund companies, we fund projects. Um, as I said, up to one and a half million dollars in some cases. The budget is divided between the two partners according to the work share. Uh, we would like to see that each partner should do a significant uh, part of the tasks and the innovation. Uh, and we uh, allow not less than 30%, 70% um, in the work share. Uh, the two partners will receive their relative match from BIRD to cover 50% of their R&D expenses. Uh, we try to uh, help companies be successful um, and have a successful project. So we look at the uh, development part uh, of the R&D uh, budget in the broadest sense possible uh, to help them reach commercialization. So we also allow initial stages of sales and marketing um, in, the, uh, in the allowed R&D expenses. And we get repayments as royalties if the project generates revenues. So for successful projects, repay the grant, and this helps keep our fund sustainable. But repayments are capped and non-dilutive, as I said. Uh, if you look at, at our investments in recent years, you can see that we are agnostic to sector. Uh, we invest in any innovative technology uh, besides defense. Uh, but we do have Homeland Security uh, program and uh, cyber program as well. Um, we've been quite successful over the years. Uh, since inception, we granted uh, more than $370 million from that initial endow endowment of uh, $110 million. We received repayments of more than uh, $110 million from successful projects. And the uh, sum that we are most proud of uh, is that we uh, have generated a, above about $10 billion directly and indirectly from projects that we funded. Um, and what does that mean? We are looking at other metrics than just the repayments to the, to the uh, fund. Uh, we look also at the national level uh, benefits like job creation, the capital raised by the partners, uh, merger and acquisitions, export, Israeli companies setting up offices and operations in the US uh, and American companies opening offices and R&D centers in Israel. So we see a lot, of, uh, a lot of impact on the national level as well. We have uh, a few call for proposals and I'm gonna run through them. Uh, pretty fast. So if companies are interested, I'd be happy to talk offline, uh, help you find partners and give you more information about, about the call for proposals. Uh, we have an issue, uh, we have a general call for proposals that we issue twice a year, every March and September. Uh, since we are currently in the, still in the uh, September uh, cycle, 
I put here the dates, but if you're interested in applying, the next cycle will be in March, probably beginning of March, and the dates will be uh, published on our website uh, pretty soon. Uh, so it is a rapid process to submit uh, an executive summary uh, in September, as you can see here, and decisions are in December. So we are very proud that a federally funded program is moving so fast. Um, in the general call, we call we invite partners, uh, two unrelated companies, uh, one from the US and one from Israel to jointly submit a proposal for the development of innovative technologies in a list of topics, uh, which is listed in the call and it is an open list. Um, and the proposed project to demonstrate significant commercial potential. Um, the topics that are mentioned here are advanced manufacturing, agriculture technology, clean tech and environment, communication, construction tech, fintech, homeland security and cyber, life sciences, software, etc. But any innovative technology can apply. Uh, and as I said, we recommend for applicants to talk to us prior to the submission. We can try to help um, the companies. We guide through the process. We can review submission papers and give feedback. So uh, my most important message is talk to us. Uh, we also have uh, a call for proposals uh, in the, our program Bird Energy that was launched in 2009 through the Energy Independence and Security Act. Um, we have funded more than uh, 60 projects so far, uh, and it is uh, an imp uh, implementation of a cooperation agreement between the US, the American Department of Energy, the Israeli Ministry of Energy, and the Israeli Innovation Authority that fund this program. Uh, the, the topics in this call uh, are solar and wind, advanced vehicle technologies, alternative fuels, smart grid storage, water energy nexus, advanced manufacturing, and AI for energy management, as well as carbon-free technologies uh, and gas technologies. Um, this will be published um, in a few months, uh, I believe around March. Uh, with a deadline at the end of June or beginning July. And in this program, we can fund a collaboration between either two companies or a company and a university or a research institute. So a lot of potential there. Please talk to me if uh, you are interested in finding a partner. A new program uh, that is currently um, uh, still available with uh, decision uh, submissions of the executive summary in the middle of November is Bird Cyber. Uh, this is a collaboration between uh, the Department of Homeland Security and the Israeli Na National uh, Cyber Directorate um, for uh, four topics, secured architecture for protecting core operational processes, small and medium airports or seaports, uh, real-time risk assessment solution pilot, piloting resilient centers for small and medium businesses and enterprises, and advanced data fusion and analytics. Uh, we can provide up to one and a half million dollars uh, per project uh, for two companies or a company and a research institute. And we're actively looking for partners um, and uh, companies and research institutes that are interested in uh, submission for this program. So talk to me if you're if this is relevant for you. And our net last call for proposals, uh, Bird Homeland Security. Um, this is the these are the old dates, uh, and we will publish new dates uh, uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, uh, this is another collaboration between uh, the Department of Homeland Security and the public, uh, the Israeli Ministry of Public Security uh, that we run uh, for a list of topics that is relevant uh, for first responders and homeland security um, uh, sector. Uh, you can see here the different, uh, the different uh, uh, deadlines and uh, the timeline for our submission. Uh, all this is on our website and I'd be happy to elaborate uh, offline. We have uh, an external review process. It is a competitive process and our reviewers in the general program, reviewers from the National Institute of Standards and Technology and from the Israeli Innovation Authority 
review the proposal. Um, and in the case of uh, the bird energy, reviewers from DOE and the Israeli Ministry of Energy and, uh, and in the bird homeland security from DHS and MOPS, so for, from the stakeholders. And they are looking for a very high level of innovation. They look for a synergy, good synergy between the companies, uh, good complementary technologies or a challenging but good integration of one technology into the other. And sometimes it can be a pilot project and especially uh, in the cyber uh, call for proposals, you can see that we can fund the, the pilots. Um, they want to see that companies can identify that there is a good market opportunity and that they can quantify it. And finally, that the partners can demonstrate that they have uh, a commercialization strategy and they know how to get to market. Um, why BIRD? Well, uh, obviously because of the funding, uh, it helps support the project and the partnership as you heard from uh, Stephen Liveview, but we are not a VC. Um, this is, uh, of course, non-diluted funding. We share the risks with the partners without an upside, uh, which is crucial, especially when the projects are innovative, risky, and challenging. Um, there is the validation or a step of a uh, stamp of approval by having the project reviewed by the external professional reviewers from NIST, from the Israeli Innovation Authority, and selected by our board of governors and the executive committee uh, for the special programs. We also issue a press release uh, after the selection and we announce the support um, and the funding of the project. The DOE will, uh, will share the, um, the press release and, uh, and list the projects that they funded and also DHS. Uh, so companies really appreciate this recognition. Uh, and we know that our, the participation in a, prog in a program also helps in raising funds and in commercialization and accelerates time to market. I already mentioned the, uh, uh, the parameters uh, for success on the national level. Uh, that is very important for us as well. On our website, you can see um, a project database with the projects that received our funding by sector, by state. You can see that Utah has eight projects that were funded and we would love to see this number increase. Um, and I really urge you to talk to me. Uh, this is my contact information. I'd be happy also to share the slides. Uh, our website is www.birdf.com. The call for proposals are there and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you for giving me this opportunity and thank you, Steve, for taking the time um, and presenting your project. Indeed. Well, thank you very much, Maya. That was very informative. Um, uh, I had several questions in mind and, and many of them were answered as you were going. Uh, as to Q&A, we're gonna do that at the end, but I would encourage anyone listening to uh, throw questions into the chat. I haven't seen any yet but I'd be happy to, to see those there now and uh, I'll tee them up for Maya at the end. Uh, I think at this point we're, we're doing well on time for everyone's uh, uh, awareness. And I'm gonna turn it over now to the US Commercial Service to, to Daniel and Mike. And uh, Daniel, it looks like you're frozen at the minute, uh, at the moment rather. Mike, maybe maybe you can run with it and, and bring, bring Daniel in. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yeah, now you're back. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you so much. Um, and everyone can see my screen, right? Yes. Um, yeah, you know, I just want to say uh, before I get started, Maya, thank you so much. Uh, this was a, a learning experience for me too. And uh, I got to say what a great resource uh, the Bird uh, Foundation is for American companies looking to partner with uh, Israeli companies. Um, so hello everyone, my name is Dan Bruner. I'm an international trade specialist with the US Commercial Service Office here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, we are the export promotion arm of the United States Department of Commerce. Our mission is threefold to promote the exports of goods and services from the US, uh, particularly by SMEs, uh, to advance and protect US commercial interests overseas and to attract inward investment into the United States. Uh, we have a network of specialists in over 100 cities nationwide, 
I and one other person uh, consist of entirely of uh, CS Utah. So we help companies that are headquartered here in Utah. We also have a network of officers and specialists in over 80 countries worldwide. You're going to be hearing from one of them, a commercial officer, my colleague, Mike Calvert, uh, after I'm finished here, uh, to get a picture of uh, what the foreign commercial service side is all about. So um, I'll talk uh, mainly about what we do here and uh, exporter outreach from the US commercial service domestically. Uh, we have four pillars of our services. The way we help American companies is fourfold. First, export counseling. If a company ever has a question on the export process, uh, what is my HS code? Uh, what countries do we have free trade agreements on with? Uh, you can always reach out to me and I'm happy to assist. Um, we also provide market intelligence. We have country commercial guides on our website, trade.gov. We can also do uh, initial market checks to understand if a product or service is viable in a foreign country. Um, we can provide business to business matchmaking. This usually consists of uh, our flagship service, which is the gold key service where a specialist will uh, look into the market, see potential partners for an exporter um, and gauge their interest in working with that exporter, then provide a report. Then the exporter will choose which of those, com those companies they'd like to uh, have an appointment with. The embassy will then set up that appointment uh, and then they will discuss. Uh, finally, we're involved in commercial advocacy and diplomacy. Uh, in terms of diplomacy, if there is ever an issue that you're having a trade, a non-tariff related trade barrier, uh, you can always come to us. We can see if we can shake things loose. Uh, for example, if you have products that are stuck at port and um, you're getting an arbitrary reason from the importing authority as to why uh, things are stalled and uh, you know time is money, you're getting you're paying drayage. Um, you can contact us. We will see if we can contact the foreign government uh, office and see where the where the holdup is and how we can assist. Also, we're involved in advocacy. If you are bidding on a foreign government tender, please reach out to us. Uh, we might be able to get somebody from the embassy or uh, Department of Commerce to contact the um, their counterpart in the foreign government just to make sure that uh, everything is on an even playing field when you are bidding in a competitive tender. So just as I described, no matter where you are in the export process, there's something that we can do to help, whether it's developing your export strategy, providing background checks on partners, matchmaking trips overseas, counseling with the overseas staff, promoting your products uh, overseas, export regulation and compliance, and trade shows. We are also involved in SEO when it comes to international e-commerce. So we have uh, a e-commerce innovation lab within, uh, within ITA, and this is focused on digital strategy. We have a, a service called the Website Globalization Review Gap Analysis, where we take a look at your, your website, your e-commerce international focused website and where are the pain points do you have any metadata issues what's preventing a an international consumer from finding your website or using it we provide best practices and um and also help you um get well versed in uh what you're going to need do you need a, an api plugin for your website and so forth so um in a nutshell, that is what the U.S. Commercial Service does to help American companies to expand internationally. Uh, I'd like to send it over to my colleague, Mike, in uh, Tel Aviv for more background on uh, how the Foreign Commercial Service works. Great. Thanks so much, Daniel. So this is what, it, what must be like playing on the New York Yankees following this all-star cast here. I'm not sure what's left for me, but... In case anyone has a shred of doubt on why they shouldn't be doing business in Israel, I hope to be able to allay and address those fears uh, with maybe a few additional uh, details and bits of information for you about doing business in Israel. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and hopefully everyone will see what I've got on my end. Bear with me. Okay. 
Looks good. So I've just got a few slides I'd like to be able to walk through. Now, don't worry. I was once told there's nothing scarier than a bureaucrat with a microphone and captive audience. I'm not planning to talk through all these slides, but I do want to highlight a few key points for you, um, just so you can understand about some of the market opportunities we see in Israel. Now, first off, you can see some great statistics here on the country of Israel. I like to view it as compact yet power pack. Right? It's a country about the size of New Jersey and a population of about 9 million people, but the economic activity here is, is just incredible, where Israel is punching way above its weight. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's been really interesting the past 24 hours as Israel is going through its elections right now, uh, and it appears that a new government uh, will be coming into place shortly. Now, one thing that's not going to change, though, is that the U.S. will remain as the partner of choice uh, for Israel. You know, there's a lot of connections, both um, historically, I think culturally, where Israelis tend to look to the U.S. first uh, when they're looking for new partners, and that includes suppliers, technology uh, providers, et cetera, as well. Uh, and it's also a very diverse country. I mean, obviously, you can hear Hebrew and Arabic spoken here, but much like the United States, it's a melting pot. And so you're going to walk down the street and don't be surprised to hear Ethiopian, Eritrean, um, uh, Ukrainian, Russian. It really is a diverse country. Uh, and uh, I think there's that creates a lot of a lot of innovative energy. And I'll tell uh, I'll talk a bit more about that in just a moment. Here's some of the big reasons you want to be doing business in Israel right now. Um, number one, a really robust uh, economy with strong GDP growth. I mean, even during the worst parts of COVID, uh, I saw some estimates that Israel's economy was growing by more than 6%. That was just unheard of. Uh, now, and U.S. companies, of course, have a great advantage because of our free trade agreement uh, that we have with Israel, where um, close to around 98% of all goods can take advantage of the FTA uh, to bring your goods uh, into Israel with no duties or tariffs. Now, on the top right of your screen, you'll see the high tech and R&D. Um, this is one of the signature lines for Israel, uh, which has led to this, the slogan, the startup nation that you hear a lot of times. Um, there's a lot happening here in the tech space. A lot of U.S. companies have moved their R&D to Israel, uh, and it's, it's not uncommon to hear people compare. It's, it's like a new Silicon Valley that's really coming up here. And this is not just in the tech sector. This is now spreading out into a lot of those industries that my colleague Maya was just highlighting, um, whether that's energy, uh, cybersecurity, healthcare. There's a lot happening uh, in a number of industries thanks to this innovative uh, tech hub that's emerging here. Uh, let me move along here. Um, just some more statistics to show you a little bit on the growth here in Israel and how much they're spending on their population, their GDP per capita in comparison to some of their neighbors. You can see Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and you've got Israel here in the green just really uh, investing the money in their people locally here, uh, which creates for significant economic opportunities for U.S. companies. Um, total two-way trade, we're probably looking at about $30 billion, give or take, for 2022. Here are some of the big sectors that we're seeing U.S. exporters have a lot of success in. Um, you know, transportation equipment, we've seen some massive infrastructure projects come through in seaports and rail. Um, a lot of, um, you know, inputs such as chemicals and machinery as well. Um, yeah, this, is, this is kind of my... Um, my go-to list right now for U.S. companies. You know, if you're active in any of these sectors on the left-hand side, you should be reaching out to Daniel immediately to find out more about how we can help you sell overseas. This is not a, a, an exhaustive list. There's a number of other sectors and industries that are best prospects, but here's some of the hottest ones right now. And you can see with the ICT sector um, connected to that tech industry, that tech hub, which I mentioned, defense and aerospace. In a lot of ways, um, U.S. and Israel are global leaders when it comes to the latest defense technologies, but we're also doing a lot of this together. There's a lot, there's very strong military to military partnerships between both countries, uh, and there's a lot of U.S. government funding behind this as well to support um, some of these, uh, you know, uh, latest breakthroughs in, in, uh, in defense and aerospace technologies. As a matter of fact, um, this weekend, we have an aerospace and defense trade mission from the United States that's landing in Israel, where we hope to be able to broker some new partnerships as well. Um, also, you'll see on here, life sciences, healthcare, and water technologies. Okay, 
Let's talk a little bit more about the, the secret sauce in Israel. What, why has it become the startup nation? Why are things going so well? Well, you know, number one, I think it's because of the strong military connections um, where, where here in Israel, everyone has to do uh, mandatory military service. Uh, and what we see is a lot of people that are in some of the special units that are focused on technology, actually, when they finish their military service, they go right into the private sector. And a lot of these folks have a great entrepreneurial spirit. Um, they're the ones going out there leading a lot of these startups as well. Um, a lot of creative thinking and ideas coming from this. And this has created a swell of money and resources. And you're going to see a lot of venture capital uh, here in Israel as well. Um, a lot of um, incubators, accelerators as well. And of course, the, the uh, academic institutions, the universities, et cetera, are very closely plugged in uh, as well to you know, uh, the Bird Foundation and other uh, organizations like this. All right, here's just a snapshot. You know, I mentioned a lot of US companies are moving their R&D here. You might recognize a couple names on this list. I don't know if you've ever seen a Fortune 100 list, but um, there's definitely more room to grow as well. We, we know that there's a lot of um, small to medium-sized enterprises in the US that are very eager to, to, to come here and do business as well. And I think it is worth mentioning that we've seen a significant increase uh, in Israeli companies looking to invest and open up operations in the United States. And of course, we love to help support that FDI in great states like Utah as well. Um, you know, I'm going to hold off on this, you know, I'm sure we can share the slides afterwards, but for Israeli business culture, you know, if this turns out to be the right market for you, we're happy to set up a phone call and we'll give you the keys to success on, on how to successfully navigate, uh, you know, business rituals in the environment here. Um, you know, here's another snapshot of other local partners you want to reach out to. Uh, we have a very robust and strong AmCham here. Uh, if you've ever worked with those entities overseas, part of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, um, FICC is the local Israeli uh, Federation as well. Right here in the middle, of course, you've got Bird Foundation. You know, we, we love Bird, and I'm very proud to be joined today with them as uh, guest presenters on today's uh, webinar. Okay, let me go ahead, and I want to end with a call to action before we move to Q&A, um, because I always think it's good for us to highlight, you know, what do I do next? And so if you've, heard, if you've liked what you heard today, and you're interested in doing business in Israel, um, I strongly encourage you to, number one, you know, reach out to the World Trade Center in Utah, reach out to Daniel, your local resources there, they're going to help advise and counsel you and get you started on the way. Uh, and then, of course, they'll connect you to overseas folks like Maya and myself, and we'll try to plug you in as, as, as best as we can. Now, um, for those that are active in the clean technology space, I do want to highlight one more opportunity. I mentioned this weekend we have a big U.S. delegation coming focused on aerospace and defense. Um, we're actually building our second visit next year in mid-March on March 12th to the 17th, where we are recruiting US companies that are involved in, in clean technology. Now, what is clean technology? For us, that's electric vehicles, that's renewable energy, that's carbon capture technologies, that's water uh, purification and water conveyance technologies. Uh, we know that there's massive opportunities uh, in the Middle East. And so this delegation will be visiting Israel, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. Uh, and applications uh, are now being accepted for U.S. companies that would love to, to come out here and participate in that delegation. Well, we'll set up a full B2B matchmaking schedule for you with vetted partners. And of course, we'll look to set up a number of networking opportunities and site visits as well. So if there's any Utah-based companies active in the clean tech space, we'd love to hear from you. And of course, I'm happy to share more details uh, afterwards on how to apply. With that, I'll go ahead and stop and, and hand it back over to David. But thanks much to everyone and looking forward to hearing your questions. Very good. Th thank you very much, Mike. Um, oops. Uh, just looking back at the chat. So uh, that was great. Uh, really appreciate your enthusiasm and uh, the color that you provided on opportunities in Israel. Um, we do, uh, we're doing well on time. And so I would uh, welcome questions from the audience. I don't see any yet via the chat. That is, that is the way to ask questions to our presenters. Um, but I had a few, as I uh, alluded to earlier, and maybe I'll, I'll start with that. Uh, Maya, for you, um, and may maybe also for you, Mike, as well, uh, obviously at the heart of this is partnership between Utah companies and Israeli companies. And I don't think anyone mentioned 
how would a Utah company find an Israeli partner? And do, is it usually a partnership that exists before they're contemplating the grant? Or does the grant actually uh, lead uh, companies like a Utah company to find a partner? If you could share a little bit of color on that, I think that would be helpful. If, if I might start, um, uh, first of all, I am, I am, and I think I didn't uh, introduce myself at the start of my uh, presentation, but I am the West Coast uh, director and I'm based in California. So uh, it's easy to reach me um, and you can, uh, the best way is through email or LinkedIn. You can give me a call as well. And that would be the first step. Um, then I will try to understand what kind of project the Utah company ha has in mind um, and what would be uh, or who would be the best partner for them. And then we have a team in Israel and we all work together to try and, and find the best uh, match, the best partner. Uh, I Usually what I do ask is for a value proposition and a non-confidential uh, one pager that I can share with my team. We also have uh, an office in uh, the East Coast and in Texas, and we all work together to try and find partners. So if it's a Utah-based company that is looking for an Israeli partner, I will share their one pager and their value proposition uh, with my team, and we will reach out to some potential Israeli partners uh, we ask for permission before we share any information. Uh, we will share probably a list of a few names. Uh, we also have use databases that are available online and some databases that are available to us. Um, and we also share some of these links and ask companies to uh, do some homework before and give us uh, examples of who uh, they, they would like to uh, partner with. And once there is um, uh, a will from both sides and both sides are interested in a conversation, we facilitate this call. Uh, and then if they decide that they would like to apply for us, uh, for our funding, uh, it's a pretty simple process that starts with an executive summary that is a non-binding document based on our template. It's up to five pages. So it's really not uh, very time consuming. Um, the, all the documents are on our website, and I also am happy to share the link. Um, and they just submit that executive summary, who are the partners, what the project is, a little bit about the innovation and the commercial potential. Uh, we go over this um, uh, really in a matter of days and come back to the, uh, uh, to the partners with a go, no go recommendation because we don't wanna waste anyone's time. So if we think that they don't have good chances of winning the grant in that specific cycle, we will tell them at the beginning that we don't recommend to submit the full proposal. For those who, believe, who we believe have good chances and we usually try to bring the success rate in the full proposal stage to about uh, 40 to 50%, sometimes is 30%, depending on the year and the cycle. Uh, but th this means that there are really good chances of winning the one million or in some cases, one and a half million dollars. Um, we will uh, give them the guidelines on how to proceed to the full proposal um, stage and what they need to submit. Um, so companies really appreciate the process uh, we don't waste their time if we don't think that they, uh, they can win the grant. Um, and then there is the review process that I, uh, that I mentioned. Uh, the reviewers on the U.S. side are anonymous. They just read the proposal. On the Israeli side, there is also a virtual meeting. And the American partners are um, uh, encouraged to attend as well. So it's a very good good opportunity to uh, present the program, the project, and uh, and answer questions. And then the board of governors that have people from both governments. Uh, on the U.S. side, the co-chair is from NIST, and on the Israeli side, uh, it's the Israeli chief scientist, um, State Department, Treasury, and the Israeli equivalent. Um, they are the ones who decide who will be awarded. So the first step is to talk to us, even if you don't know anyone on, in Israel or Israeli companies, if you don't know someone in Utah, we will be happy to make those introductions. 
Um, we will be happy to work together with the World Trade Center, with uh, uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, to help find you a partner. Very good. So it sounds like it's somewhat common. And in fact, you have a service aimed directly at helping find partners. So that's uh, that's great news. Um, all right, I, had a, I still don't see any questions from the audience. Again, I encourage you. We'd really like to talk about what's important to you. Uh, but I had one other question, uh, and that concerns royalties and the uh, paying back of the grant. Maya, you mentioned that it gets paid back from anywhere uh, up to 100 to 150 percent of the grant. Uh, two questions. One, how is that royalty determined? Is it the first dollar in of revenue or is it just a small percentage of the revenue generated when it's commercialized? And what dictates whether it's 100 percent or 150 percent? So, so uh, first of all, it's uh, we ask that once there are sales and only if the project generates revenue, then the companies repay a minimum of five percent of the sales of the specific project um, that we funded uh, every year, up to the uh, the the grant. And there is a linear increase that is capped at 1.5 of the original grant. And that, um, that it depends on the timeline of return. So the minimum is 5% of the sales each year of the, of the, of the specific project. And uh, at the fifth year after the project is completed, it will reach that point of uh, 1.5. I see. Okay, thank you. Um, Again, uh, please ask questions if you have any. Uh, I had a third and final from my side, and then and then maybe we'll wrap up if there aren't other questions from the audience. Um, I just, uh, again, Maya, and maybe Mike, you could jump in on this as well. I, I wanted to get an understanding. Is it, I, I have a small sense that the model is typically an Israeli company with a lot of tech, a lot of innovation, trying to access a US market. And so the partner in the US has more, maybe distribution capabilities or something along those lines. Is that the model or is it just as likely to be uh, US tech, maybe trying to exploit the Israeli market, which Mike, you spoke about so enthusiastically. And I realize it could be either or, I'm, I'm not trying to say, get a, get a kind of simple binary answer, but what does it tend to be? And I don't know, any color on what works better uh, or what's more appealing to the, to the people evaluating the proposals? So I think that uh, historically you were right that we saw more um, Israeli startups connecting with large uh, U.S. companies, uh, but we do see a shift and we have a lot of uh, smaller companies or medium sized companies uh, either partnering with um, uh, equivalent size companies on the other side. Uh, we also see smaller American startups uh, working with large uh, large companies in Israel or with research institutes. Uh, so we, we see a shift in that. Um, and then this is why it is very relevant for companies in Utah, even if you are not a large company uh, to yeah. talk to us, we can find you a partner, you can uh, reach an audience and a market that uh, maybe you didn't think about, uh, maybe uh, get into uh, another another sector that is not yours, uh, your uh, a natural sector. Um, uh, I think there was a, a question also about IP. Um, yep. Go for it. So, um, of course, as I said, we don't take could any you, IP could rights. Repeat the question. My, my, I'm sorry oh. to interrupt. Could you state the full question? Sure. Uh, can, uh, can we all uh, assume all normal IP protections will be in place starting with NDA? So, of course, you are free uh, to request an NDA from your partner, and we encourage you to protect your IP. And it's up to the companies to decide what they want to do with their IP, if they want to share it, if they want to keep it uh, for themselves. Uh, we don't get involved in the business decisions between the companies. Um, and of course, that if you are, uh, if you feel more comfortable that we will sign an uh, NDA as well, we have an NDA on our website and our executive director can sign this on our behalf. Um, so of course that all of that is uh, regulated and we encourage companies to, uh, to um, maintain cautious and of course, um, and, and, and protect their IP if they are interested in that. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I, Mike, I, I suggested you comment on one or two things. Anything you wanted to add, not, not necessary, but if, if you were looking for that opportunity, here it is. You know, Maya's a tough act to follow. She yeah. just, you know, <laughs> fully uh, answers all the questions. So no, yeah. I don't really have anything else to add, but um, as we move to wrap up, David, I'll just say that for our, our attendees today, there's a wealth of resources out there to help support you and your business to, do, uh, to be successful overseas. Um, and just tap into those, whether it's the World Trade Center, uh, you know, Daniel and myself at the Commercial Service or, or Maya at the Bird Foundation as well. So we much appreciate this opportunity, David, to be a part of this, uh, this wonderful webinar. Thank you. Great. Very good. Well, uh, now you're a tough like, act to follow, Mike. I too was going to encourage everyone to take advantage of these opportunities. And I know it might be a little confusing. It tends to happen in the world of of economic development that there are many players with different with overlapping roles or maybe seem like duplicative roles but i can assure you you could reach out to any one of us and we would act as your ombudsman your your partner your your friend and help you navigate um it's not a competitive situation if the best uh ally for you or, or resource for you is in israel or here in salt lake with the u.s commercial service or at the bird foundation or here at the world trade center i think i think we we all would like to uh, help you figure that out and provide that service uh, all eager to see uh, these utah companies here today uh, prosper through international trade and investment and maybe on that point i'll just add what i probably should have said at the beginning um the World Trade Center, beyond events like this, uh, you know, connecting you with resources like the Bird Foundation, uh, has a host of other services. I, I think uh, some of you may be aware, but uh, similar to the U.S. Commercial Service, we too can help you with analysis of markets. Uh, we too uh, have a set of uh, trade shows that are complementary uh, to what the Commercial Service uh, offers. Uh, we're funded by the Small Business Administration. We go all over the world, including the Middle East, on trade shows. We go there on trade missions. It was alluded to. We were recently in Israel with the governor and 50-plus uh, uh, Utah companies um, uh, uh, learning about the market. Uh, and we also have grant funding. Uh, we're very, very fortunate to get money from the U.S. government, from the Small Business Administration, a partner organization to the U.S. Commercial Service. And um, uh, we, we have up to a million dollars a year. Uh, to give to small companies like those here today uh, to help uh, with your own travel abroad, with your hiring the U.S. Commercial Service for some of its services, for working with marketing partners, other marketing partners uh, on your website optimization, uh, and a whole host of other of, the, of other services. So um, we uh, we would love to hear from you about, like I said, about those services about how to work with the U.S. Commercial Service, of course, how to work uh, with the Bird Foundation. And I can see that um, we're sharing some information here, and I'm sure Rayanne afterwards can send out uh, links as well to the presentations, as well as email addresses in case anyone has further uh, questions or just wanna, wanna, wanna pursue these opportunities. So again, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your joining us today. And look forward to uh, to hearing from you. And I, I hope you uh, keep your eyes open for other opportunities from from uh, our partners at the U.S. Commercial Service as well as World Trade Center about how to help you grow and thrive uh, through global trade and investment. Thank you very much.